Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're going to be covering the exponential regression fit we did on, on the hex price. Back in the day, we have an entire video on the exact mathematics, the methodology, the data I used to make that model. So if you haven't checked that out yet, there will be a link right here on the video so you can tap that and go check that out first. So if you've already seen that, then you know exactly what we're talking about here. We're pretty much modeling the hex price with a linear regression curve um, because at the end of the day, right, when you draw a line on a logarithmic chart, then you actually get an exponential curve on a linear chart. So we did linear regression on logarithmic data. And so you actually get, it really depends on what scale you're using uh, to determine whether you want to call it linear regression or exponential regression. At the end of the day, it just, it really just depends on which uh, framework you're using. So we like to call it exponential regression, given what it looks like here on a linear chart, because it just looks that much more impressive, right? And the reason we're covering the exponential fit here in this video is because we are pretty much on top of it. If you can see right here, the price has come and landed on our exponential regression support. Okay. So as you saw in that video, we went ahead and not only plotted our exponential regression support zone, but we also looked at how far extended price has actually gotten from that support zone. And remember, recall that it was this region over here, day 150 or so, uh, when the exponential support region was around 0 0.0002 and price was what, like 30x above that. So we divided the price by this exponential regression support curve and we got this. If you remember, this is how we got our overvaluation from the exponential regression support of 24.377 is the highest overextended we've ever been. And that was around this region over here. We, what we did with that number 24.377, again, this is almost like an entire summary uh, of, of what we did here is we then fitted that to this new, I guess you could call exponential regression upper tolerance curve. Yeah, the, these names are getting wild, right? And the reason we did that, again, it's only it's only modeled to one data point. It's only fit to a single data point, which is that point of overextension. And all we did was we multiplied our support curve by that level of overextension to get our upper bound. And again, only fit to a single data point. But you can see that we actually had some some price action go through it. So you could argue that even though it's fit to a single only a single data point, it actually fits right? It actually coincides with a few more than just one. Okay. So that's the argument there. But the reason you clicked on this video is to look at where we are now. And that is we are touching the support zone almost identically. Okay. And I do actually want to go back to this chart real quick before we dive into that, right? Let's talk a little bit more about this chart over here. So remember that this this point here, this peak is how we got our upper band. Now recall or understand that when this curve here, this extension multiple, it, which is what it is, right? When this extension multiple reaches this one level, it pretty much corresponds to price reaching this line, our, our exponential regression support. And so you saw we reached it here. Let's actually see what number it was 1.06. Okay. So if it reaches one, it essentially means we're on that red curve. Okay. However, you see over here that we actually dipped a little beneath one. So we got to 1.02 and at the lowest point, it was at 94 or 0.947. Okay. So that, that implies that price dipped 5% beneath five, excuse me, this implies that price dipped 5% beneath our exponential regression support and actually closed a few candles beneath it, a few daily candles beneath it. It wasn't there for too long. If we zoom in a lot, let's zoom in a lot over here and see how many days did we actually spend beneath there before popping back up. So it looks like day 450 
all the way to day 456. So we only spent about a week beneath it, right? And this is daily data, so maybe five to seven daily candles uh, printed beneath it. And when was this? On day 454, um, about 50 days ago. So two and a half months ago, early March, late February. That was probably these zones right here, okay? So these zones over here, we actually broke it. And if you, if you look at candles, yeah, we did have a few days where we were printing candles beneath our exponential regression support. So it's not to say we can't go beneath it. Remember, it's fit to these data points over here. If you recall, it's fit to some data points here, some data points here, some over here, and in these zones as well. So we essentially looked at these regions, right, of, of support. Again, we have an entire video on that where we essentially fitted these zones of, of support to this exponential curve. And you know what I haven't done actually is found a correlation coefficient between our exponential curve and our, and our price data. Um, that might be fun. Or actually, I did do it the other day. Yeah, 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 I did it over here. It's about 77% right so how correlated is our actual price data to our predicted price data with a support about 78 percent or so so interestingly enough the data is more correlated with our fit than it is with bitcoin and ethereum because remember with bitcoin and ethereum we did a whole video on how correlated hex the hex price is to those two uh check that out if you haven't already i'll leave that here as well uh, we found that to Bitcoin, HEX was correlated about 73, 74%. I think with Ethereum, it was closer to 71, 72%. So to see that our price is correlated even more so to our, our prediction than those markets is a little interesting. I'll leave it at that, right? So back to where we are now. We've seen that price can dip beneath our exponential support and stay there for about a week or so. And and the lowest point it got was about 5.3% beneath our exponential support. So if we look at where we are now, price is on our exponential support right now, which our exponential fit is at 1.588 or so. Okay. And what would 5% beneath that look like? Um, doing some math in my head. I think the 1.5 penny region. Let's do some some math over here in a, in a cell, okay? So what I'm what I'm pretty much saying is, okay, if we dip, you know, five percent, then you have 95 percent value left of at our exponential support. What's that? 1588 right now. So yeah, if we were to dip five percent beneath our red curve, we would be looking at pretty much 1.5 cent hex cl closing price, right? These don't count wicks. So that converges with prior support resistance zones of 1.5 pennies, right? Or prior resistance zones that we're hoping will turn support. So again, once your models converge, it's usually a good sign. What that means is once multiple models from different angles are saying similar things, then in my opinion, there's some strength to that. Obviously, this is not financial advice. I have no clue what's gonna happen. You don't either. However, historically, we've seen this red curve act as support. We've seen us dip slightly beneath it, 5% or so for about a week with daily closing candles. Um, daily candles, closing price, sure. You get what I'm saying, right? 1.5 pennies is looking like this important support resistance zone, not only on our ascending triangle on, on horizontal, right? So not only is it horizontal support, but it's also exponential support. So we have convergence of support is what I'm really trying to get at here. And do I think this could be potentially the end of our accumulation zone in these lower bands? It might be, it really might be. Because if you look at how long we spent uh, over here, it was about 100 days or so. We did the math on a prior video. Price spent around 100 days or so consolidating between the orange and the yellow band. And these were historically a great time to buy. I didn't point out this pattern though that, you know what, let's point it out in this video here. Let's make this a longer one. So what I found really interesting that 
I haven't mentioned in any prior video, this is my first time bringing it up, is if you look at what happened over here, we already mentioned that we were consolidating and accumulating between the orange and the yellow bands for about 100 days, but notice that we had a peak up to the green band, right? a peak to the green band, which is one band above the upper band to our accumulation zone before we held on the yellow and then popped off to the pink. Now, look at what happened over here. We spent most of our time accumulating between the red and the orange bands, about 200 days or so, so about twice as long as we did over here between the orange and the yellow bands, but notice that we also had a local peak to the band above the upper accumulation band, right? Over here, accumulation between green and, or excuse me, over here, accumulation between orange and yellow, local top on the green. Over here, accumulation between red and orange, local top on the yellow. Does that make sense? You see how we're kind of dropping one exponential regression band from here to here? So that is part of the premise of my, um, that's part of my premise that maybe we won't reach this pink band again like we did over here, but rather maybe reach the purple band. And over here, it only took a month or so to pop off from from yellow to pink. So over here, given that we've taken about twice as long in the accumulation zone, I'm thinking maybe it might take twice as long to reach the purple band or even a little longer, right? Who knows? Uh, so if it's, it took, say, two months, that would put us in June, purple band, right? So day 569 on here would be, look at that. 52 and a half cents or so, 53 cents. And remember, 55 cents is uh, the design intention of Hex before uh, two and a half years from inception, which again, not, not financial advice, but Hex was designed to do 10,000 X in two and a half years or less from December 2019, which implies that it would be reaching it before May 2022. So what is that? We still have like a year and a month to go. Uh, but it could happen sooner, right? And this would pretty much fulfill its design intention if we were to keep following something like this. And that would correspond to about a 30x from here, which, you know, over here is about a 50x from local bottom to local top. So 30x also coincides with diminishing returns, right? So again, you see convergent models, you see things like this and you can't help but want to share it and see it as potentially significant. And so if we were to repeat history uh, as to, or not repeat, but if history were to rhyme, right, then what could potentially happen is, well, after we had our, our local peak, we went back into our accumulation. So after we had a local peak, went back into our accumulation. Let's actually zoom out a bit so you can see a bit better. It's being a little slow, right? So what happened? Local peak back into our accumulation, uh, local peak back into our accumulation zone, choppiness around the yellow before popping off, right? And we haven't had that choppiness around the orange, which, which would be indicative of something like that happening perhaps. All right, so the orange band is around three pennies or so. So remember prior video, we were looking at a potential bull flag scenario where the target was three pennies or so. So if we were to see three pennies that in the near future, that could correspond to this orange uh, regression band, which then would get us even a little closer to say, okay, we might, we might be seeing a rally up into these upper, upper bands, right? So again, if we were to pop off from 30, or excuse me, from three cents, then the next targets are looking like the yellow is at seven cents. If we got even more overheated, the green would start looking like 15 cents and it almost doubles, right? Every single time. Every band is almost double the prior one. Not exactly, but almost. So that's the video. Um, side note. Before the end, before we end this video, I did want to bring something up. If anyone in the community knows how to build simple websites, send me a DM on Twitter, okay? Link in the description to my Twitter, always down there, okay? Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, it's all down there. If any of you guys know how to build a simple website where I could host this chart 
an interactive chart where you guys can just hover above it, see where our exponential fit is on any given day, just the public site. So you don't have to, you know, rely on a video update, which it might not come at the exact time you're trying to, you know, time the market or whatever. So if anyone in the, in the chat, anyone watching this, anyone, you know, maybe not even you, but someone, you know, knows how to build a simple website, maybe shoot me some pointers. I'm not asking you to build it for me, right? I could, if, if, pointed in the right direction and given a couple of resources, I can figure things out. Okay. So if any of you guys can just point me in the right direction, right? I'm not hiring anyone. Um, if any of you guys can do that, that would be much appreciated. Again, I'd love to not only have this chart available, but other charts like the liquidity calculator, right? I think that'd be really cool for you guys to see at any given point, you know, how much economic energy is required to, to move hex or, you know, what, maybe you're a whale and you're like, yeah, what is my $1 million buy going to do to the hex price? Oh, 1.5 exit right now, 50% pump. Let's go full send. Um, so if any of you guys know anyone, maybe it's you, maybe it's someone, you know, knows how to build simple websites. I'm not looking for anything complicated, anything fancy, just even simple HTML is fine. Something to just host your basic, calculator spreadsheet something to host your basic um your basic graphs right nothing nothing too fancy um i, I think plot.ly plotly i've heard that's useful and i've seen it used on things like looking at bitcoin.com um but i'm not necessarily sure how to integrate that into you know a website so point me in the right direction if you know what's up if you don't, well then, sorry for wasting your time. Please, I hope you skipped past this. I should have made that disclaimer earlier. Um, but yeah, with that said, appreciate you watching. I'll keep you updated on these markets. Hopefully we have a site up and running in the near future. So I don't have to keep you guys updated with these videos. And these are more so just a cherry on top. So yeah, appreciate you watching. With that said, I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.